welcome to my morning walk which may used to be a daily thing but now maybe once a week thing in the morning since it's getting getting late the sun's getting up late good day Maddie good day Hutch Daddy good to see you so I'm out with my mine is light it's actually light getting light out there the sunrise technically is at 647 which is in 28 minutes but if we can get through the um through the forest and into the golf course we'll be good hello everybody hello everybody hello jenny hello sean hello and who else is there rap is there Very good to see you all. So you just have to follow my spotlight for now. The other day when I came through here with my spotlight, it was, um, I could see a deer or something out in the field here. But you couldn't see it. G'day, Merce Nurse. You made it very good. So not working today, I presume? Well, I hope. <laughs> yeah, looking for eyes in the dark. The only eyes I can see at the moment are the two eyes around the gates here. But I've got, um, I have good news, I'll be here for a good hour and a half today. See, look, plenty of light really. Just not under the trees. I was Maddie finding all the good scraps, was it? Well, he didn't invite me, I just found you guys randomly trolling around on the global list. You must have a group. Why, don't you, why aren't I in your group, guys? G'day, Moose and Oos. Maybe Moose and G'day, Grib 68. Welcome to my dark scope, which will soon be light when we get out of this. G'day, Kid from Desire. What's the group? Yeah, exactly. I was cruising around on the global list when there's nothing good to watch, as you do. Checking out what's going on. I go into one scope, and here's Maddie and Hutch Daddy and Jenny and Pete Foss. They're all there, and they hadn't invited me. What's going on? I was going to call in. Did you? Oh. Hey, nurse, nurse, it was good to see you scoping yesterday. No, nice to get there live. Catch a bit of your, your chat and your pizza dinner and then shopping inside. Just as I was going to bed. Something, something noisy over here. Can't see you. G'day, Aiden, 5207. Oh, g'day, Kim Carolina. Old Hampshire, Grib. Very good. Well, we're nearly there. You can't even. Even if I turn my light away, you can't even see the light at the end of the tunnel down here, can you? Oh well. No, I can see, I can see fine. It's not a problem for me. Hey look, it's actually quite light, it's just under the trees. There goes a rabbit or something over there. Something on the path here, but I think it's just a branch or something. A bit of leaves. Yeah. So it'll all be start getting better from now. Thank you for your patience. Ah, oh, what time do I? Well, I, I um, okay, I'm taking my, taking my helmet off now. Don't need that anymore. Stop. Um, I usually wake up 
5 or 5.30 or sometimes 4.30. I um, was actually surprised when it was 4.25. I checked the, the time when I woke up today, so I'd slept in a bit. But we sort of stayed up a bit late last night. Watch, was it watching you, Merce Nurse? I oh, know we did something else after that too. Well, no, I do seem to get away with like five or six hours sleep. Although I have to say, working from home, I often have a little little nap in the afternoon. But 10 minutes is enough for me if I have 10 minutes. Like I can't sleep more than 10 minutes if I sleep in the afternoon. 10 minutes is, well, as long as my eyes are closed or my consciousness is gone for. Like if I start a podcast, I often do, to fall asleep. And it'll be 10 minutes or less when I wake up again. G'day, Stichel. Good to see you here. So, not much colour in the sky. Very clear. Had a lot of... Oh, there's deer over there, I think, watching me. Problem is, in this light, this level of light, you can barely see. G'day, race car 666. Where are you watching from? From Earth. Awesome. Good to have another Earthling here. Oh dear, yeah. Scan for more deer life form. Could be a deer over there, a bit hard to tell. Oh, approaching mating season. Yeah, well it probably is. Does that mean they're going to start attacking me more? Thank you for inviting Maddie. I would assume it's the same in the UK as well. <laughs> they do, um, so Richmond Park, I don't know if you know Richmond Park, Merce Nurse or anyone. In the UK is a very famous park outside on the edges of London I guess and um, but they it's a, a huge park and has lots of deer and very famous for photography of deers. G'day Limnana there might be more bucks barking yes they might be to sound sexy to their does. Anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah, so at Richmond Park there are signs up warning people to be careful to keep a, not to not, not to get too close to the deer, particularly during the the mating season. They, what are they they've got a particular name for it as well. So I presume it's the the deer all around the UK, not just in Richmond Park that that really applies to. Here we are in Le Passage. <laughs> can hear the lawn mower over in the distance. Yes, yeah, so we've had a lovely few days of weather. It's um, 13 or 14 degrees now and it's going to be 22 or something. And pretty much the same for the next two or three days. And has been for basically the last week. Which is um, very pleasant. And um, presumably the last gasp of, of summer. But I, did I say I have good news that I can um, stay a bit later today? Probably even till 8 o'clock, although maybe I haven't got the energy. I'm still feeling a bit clammy and sweaty from my cold. Oh, and I had a, I do have, I do not have coronavirus. I managed to get a test and got a quick result back yesterday, I think it was. Yesterday morning, I think I got my result, so all good. Ah, uh, good question. This is not Australia. Sorry to fool you with the Australian accent. This is the UK. This is Surrey. And in particular, Woking which is about half an hour out of London. Did I take, no they don't, um, no I haven't had the antibody test. Um, they're not doing that on the NHS at this stage. Um, I had the, the throat and nasal swab, they do the one swab in, in your throat and your nose. It's the second time I've done it. I'd had it back in April. And both times negative. So the first time 
they had um, I don't know whether they would necessarily be trained nurses but trained people at least to do it oh, straight dog good on you I have a bad mind as well so I think you're in the right place Um, so the first time I had it they they have someone, a staff member there to do it for you my wife went a bit later and um, to, a, to a local place in Woking to do it and you had to do it yourself which um, you know was okay but, um, but this time when we went back because the whole family basically has been through now because we've all had a cold. Yes, this is the golf course. Welcome to the golf course. Oh, remind me to talk about, speaking of golf, remind me to talk about 69 in a minute when I finish this story. And um, yeah, this is usually where the sun comes up, traditionally. It was really dark as well, back in the forest. Sherwood Forest to some but now we're going to walk down through the golf course and I'm going to go across to the Priory today I'm going to walk through the, the, the river flats because <laughs> that's usually pretty nice when the in the clear skies here you've got to watch, well the boogeyman's back in the forest I think the boogeyman will come out here maybe only the the golf lawnmower will come out here Look, here he goes Any animals? Yes, there are usually lots of animals. Uh, we saw a deer just before. Did you see that? Were you here for that? No, I don't know that bloke. He probably knows me though. There's a few of them around, but I'm here often at this time, so he probably knows me. I wonder if they found me on Periscope. Shout out to the to the golf course people if they if they found me on Periscope. Maybe they go home and watch the replays. Anyway, oh, I feel like I've interrupted myself three levels deep of stories. Yes, there are, uh, there are, I think I can see probably rabbits over there, if it's not just crows. We sometimes see foxes, we often see squirrels. Boogeymen are always a constant threat. This is, um, this is Woking in the UK. Who are you? Brother or sister? I can't tell from your little photo. Anyway, oh yeah, so the COVID tests. So um, then when we went recently, they give you a choice. Well, at the bigger test centre we went to, they give you a choice. Do you want to self-administer or have someone do it for you? And um, that was a... No, this is not Australia. I'm from Australia, but this is not Australia. It's not morning like this anywhere in Australia. It's um, afternoon in Australia. But, um, so it was a bit of a hard choice, right? Whether do I do it to myself or do I, um, do I get someone to do it to me? And um, I, like, I don't mind, I don't, I, I don't find it uncomfortable. I don't have a, like a gag reflex problem or anything. I just find it tickles a bit. I don't, not even, I wouldn't even say uncomfortable. So I'm quite confident to do it myself. Um, but um, I figure if someone trained does it, they're probably more likely to do it in the right place and the right depth and all these things to get a, get a valid result. So I opted for someone else to do it. Even though I feel a little bit guilty because I don't like having to expose more people to, you know, there's a risk that if I've got it, they'll catch it for me, right? Being in close proximity like that. No, not Russia. No, I'm at the crossroads of the public bridleway and the public footpath. 
the public bridle space. Now, yeah, so with the, I reckon the animals have disappeared. <laughs> People ask about animals, and I say, yeah, yeah, of course there's animals, but there's a lot. Yeah, so it's presumably just a common cold. Yeah, so the start of that story was my, my two young boys have been back at school for now 10 days, I guess. Nine? No, sorry, just over a, a week. Uh, no, 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 they're, oh, I'm confused. No, they've been back another whole week now. So two, two weeks and two days they've been back at school. It is Neil. I thought I saw your picture there. I'm sorry. I, I, oh, I'm confused. Yeah, hi, Neil. Good to see you here. Um, so it all started, yeah, because the, the boys have been back at school, as most children in the UK, for the last two and a bit weeks. And um, a week in, they were sent home because one of them had a, had measured a fever and um, and was coughing, and they had runny nose as well and a sore throat, right? So it was just like they had a cold, and we hadn't noticed any fever. And even on our thermometer at home, we couldn't register any fever after that. Anyway, so they said, "Well, you better keep him at home and get a COVID test if you can." So we did for him, and then this well, which came negative very quickly and um, and then it sort of spread through the whole family and we've all had tests in the end and all been negative but I do have an ant I do have an antibody test sitting at home to do miss nurse but it's an inaccurate one so I was I don't know if I've, I must have told this story I've um, been randomly selected to take part in a nationwide study but um it's one of these so it's a uh, finger prick blood test that i do myself and um yeah i haven't done it yet i've had it for a week but it's um it's not like i will get the result in 10 minutes or something it's one it's like a pregnancy test style indicator thing and um but it's not um they caution you that it's not accurate, but, um, well, it's not very accurate, but it's, um, I presume that means there's lots of false negatives and false positives, but in terms of sampling the whole community, the accuracy in a, in a large set of people should be, should be good enough. Yeah, right, well, my wife actually paid for a private one for the antibody test early on, maybe in May or June, when they first came, became available privately. And um, was negative, and um, but and we we tried to get our health insurance to pay for it, and they wouldn't. So so we decided, well, because we were both going to do it, and then we thought, well, no, no, if if one of us has got it, probably both of us have got it. So one's good enough, and we'll see if health insurance pay for it, which they didn't. So enough. So, here we go. What time's the... So, 10 minutes the sun's supposed to be up. It's quite light, but not much colour in the sky. But we have... Um, so, I've sort of missed out because I've been a bit sick. Um, I've missed out on a lot of walks this last week. But um, we've apparently had a lot of dust... Well, smoke high in the atmosphere from the, the USA fires at one point, giving us good colour in the sky, but not today. It's a bit of a pity. Well, I guess you've got to have a bit of cloud around as well. Yeah, oh well, that is a little bit. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Okay, Mercy Nurse is telling us lots of useful things. Two-week lockdown at half term. Oh, shit, at half term. Oh, because we've been thinking of making plans for half term, right? Going camping again or something. I didn't hear that it was going to be half term. I thought the, heard there was talks of a two week nah, shutdown, but I would have thought it has to be quicker than that if they're if they're going to do it. But I guess the um, I guess the reason to do it over over lock, over half term is that's when everyone is going to travel and spread it around. So yeah, interesting. Okay, I think the thing with antibody tests, there are so many tests for other strains of corona like the common cold. Is the common cold really a virus? I didn't even think it was a virus, the cold. 
most accurate is the Abbott architect and the Hero Immune. Right. Yeah, I've still got a cold. I um I tend to which is a bit unfortunate. Here we are at the Ho stream. Yeah. Well I did hear about uh, the chance of a two week lockdown. Which I would have thought um doesn't really make a lot of sense. It's gotta be longer than that if it's gonna be at all. And it's gotta be soon. Because whatever measures you take, you take week at least to have any effect <laughs> anyway but I, I guess there's a there's a good rationale for doing it over <laughs> half term but it'll piss off a lot of people that's for sure <laughs> just like um you know doing it over festival times or whatever like Christmas or um, like in Morocco, they've had particular shutdowns timed around Eid festivals to when people traditionally meet and get together with families. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I was feeling really good two days ago. Yesterday I had a bit of a setback, I thought. Oh, but I do, with a cold, I very often have a cough afterwards for weeks, which is um, not going to be a good look. Yeah, I was actually on who's um Brian the the Merce talking about COVID on his scope just before I came out. And he mentioned in passing that the cold is a what did he say? COVID forty three or something? And I googled that and I couldn't find it, so Yeah, right. I mean yes. I think um I don't want to be negative because this is supposed to be a breath of fresh air, literally. And um emotionally for everyone but it seems like um the west well europe i guess the west excluding the us which is sort of doing its own thing has um has feels like it's done it's locked down and taken the economic pain and it really doesn't want to do it again so it feels like we're going to resist lockdown measures even more than the first time and therefore it's going to be really bad which i guess as they when history shows that the second waves are worse um yeah it's interesting we really don't learn do we anyway life's still pretty good for most of us we can still watch Periscope. Most of us can still get out and go for a walk. Even if we're sniffling and coughing. Anyway, for those of you who like sniffling and coughing, have I coughed? I don't feel like I've coughed, but I am. Um, there's a rabbit see rabbits in there. This is the sewage plant. Oh, maybe I should come here for um, day 75 of 100 days of water for Mark the Womble. That'd be a nice joke. But it does have nice reflections. Unfortunately, I can't get any closer though. Oh, that's pretty good. I don't want to just stand here like that for ages. Right, runny nose and sneezing. Well, that's um, yep, definitely not on the list. So I also contribute to the. Did Neil? Did Neil? Do you do this or anyone else in the UK? I think it's only in the UK. Uh, there's probably CCTV. I didn't see a sign. Um, the what is it? Zoe or something? I think is the acronym for the. Look at these stinging nettles, by the way. Oh, they're not old, but the stinging nettles have got me three times in the last few weeks, so I'm wearing my jeans today, so I should be right. Um, the, this is a Zoe 
app that you can you can yeah. report your symptoms every day, which I've been doing. <laughs> I've missed a few days, I guess. But um, g'day, Tim Ra. Um, since it came out in, I don't know when it was, March or April, <laughs> but you report your symptoms on various things and the list has sort of been expanding. So that's to try and gather statistics about who may or may not have coronavirus and the long-term patterns of people's symptoms. So I've been reporting that I had my cough and a sore throat are the only two symptoms, relevant symptoms it asks about. Michael Ads in the house. G'day, Michael. So this is... um. This is, last time we were here, this was all bare field. They win wizard. So this was all bare and it's now been, well, I don't know whether it's been planted with something. Look at that, you can see the rows though. So it's obviously been ploughed, but whether that's actually planted, whether it's just weeds growing up. Anyway, this is where we're heading. Michael, I've got to pass out, I'm out. Got out till 8 o'clock today, which I'm probably going to be after that, in fact. Oh, Miss Nurse, that's terrible. <coughs> okay, having said that I've got my jeans on, that I'm protected from the stinging nettles. I do have a short sleeve t-shirt, so <laughs> so I may be um, in a bit of trouble if it gets too too tall. <laughs> oh, I really wish there was a mute button on Periscope so I could mute while I sniffle away. Nettle soup, yeah, well, maybe I need to get it back, get my revenge on the stinging nettles. I know you're supposed to be able to eat it. You know, Vishwa, I'm good, thank you. Well, relatively good. I'm covering, recovering from a cold, but um, i good. Thousand pounds fine for people who don't quarantine in the UK, presumably. Uh, I don't know about that. But um, my mother-in-law uh, has been quarantining in my house, came from Morocco, and her, I have not, haven't been able to find out exactly the definition of 14 days. So she, um, she arrived Saturday two weeks ago, but, um, and has been, been very good, 100% compliance quarantining in our house until well she still hasn't been out today today's sunday so whether whether the day they arrive is day one which would make friday the day 14 so possibly she could have gone out yesterday or maybe it's well that makes sense that it's 14 lots of 24 hours but that's um I would have thought it was defined somewhere. Oh, I guess it probably is defined in legislation. I didn't go and look in the legislation, but in the in the UK government websites, it's not um, not defined. Yeah, right. But even if it's fourteen lots of twenty four hours, from when? From when your plane lands, or from when you arrive at your quarantine location? That makes the most sense from an infection control perspective, because you could have always caught it or spread it. Well, caught it, I guess, is the issue. You might have caught it on the on the way to your quarantine location. Malam is in the house. You had to say hello before I saw you. Sorry about that. Oh, just bumped my head. Anyway, by whatever possible measure, she's been quarantined for 14 days. So I keep teasing her, asking her where she wants to go on her, for her first outing. And the, the place I suggest is the, the local halal butcher. <laughs> but, um, well, no, it's not a butcher. It's a, not just a butcher. It's a local halal grocery store. Trick or treat is cancelled. Oh, I guess it would be. Yeah, it should be. <laughs> Makes sense. 
Yeah, oh, that'll be sad for my kids. Need to Actually, I need to talk to my wife about that. We need to stop playing it up, I guess, because my kids just started enjoying it last year and we, we had bigger plans for this year. We were going to contribute a bit more, but I guess people can still put put displays on. But, yeah, going around collecting lollies is probably not a good idea. Well, my wife makes me tagine. We had couscous tagine yesterday with seven vegetables. <clears throat> oh! Shall we go through here or shall we go over the stile over there? What do you reckon? I think I'll just go through here. Okay, so this is where this path gets interesting. It's always a good adventure coming down here. We will lose signal every now and then, and particularly around the, there's a very cool, <coughs> there we go, now I've coughed. <coughs> yeah, this path winds around everywhere. Those who have been through here, it's usually pretty spectacular going towards the rising sun. Unfortunately, we don't have um, any mist today. It's probably been misty every time I've been here. Well, my wife keeps saying, oh, I can't, I'm so, I feel so stuck here, I want to get out of the place. You know, look, we can go in half term, which is two weeks off in... in uh, second half of October and um, well we were talking about going camping but I'm not even sure about that now but um, but she keeps finding all these deals oh look you can go to Italy is it without quarantining uh, I'm thinking no way we're all going to be on national lockdown by then if there's any sense in the place, and if there's not, we should be doing it ourselves. G'day Charlene, good morning. You've been doing some nice scopes in the, of the London sunrise views. Now, okay. Well, she feels a bit stuck. I huh? she's been always used to <laughs> traveling a lot. You know, it's, and um, I, mean, I guess she's, she doesn't like the, the cold climate here doesn't bother me so much. Yeah, right, there's so much economic pressure as well. So this tree, this spiky tree, I love this spiky tree, but unfortunately we tend to lose signal when we get there. Well, exactly, don't get, well, I guess I'm not, I wouldn't be that worried about getting stuck. I guess, although if you, you're likely to be stuck in a, in a country that's not, um, not the best healthcare system. I mean, we've got to, for all that's, problems we've got a pretty good healthcare system in the UK exactly Michael exactly I have to say though I am um, and I haven't been bothered but I have to say I felt a little bit vulnerable once Australia closed up the the arrival restrictions even on Australian citizens right I mean no uh, I thought look I'm fine here right but if I lose my job and or my wife, well, if we, I mean, we've both got good full time jobs, right? So we could survive only, even on only one of them, but um, although not in our current lifestyle, but we could, um, we could survive. And um, but you know, and I never, never crossed my mind to go back to Australia to, to bunker down for health or economic reasons, but um. I guess it's a, but when I realised that door was closed to me basically now, that did make me, give me a pause, so we still got signal. Yeah, I'm in the UK, for anyone who doesn't realise, I've had a lot of people in here thinking that's Australia, so... There's another cool tree up ahead as well. <laughs> yeah. 
Yep. <laughs> yes. No, no, I would, um... I understand that, Michael. <laughs> and I thought, um... I was perfectly comfortable living here and economically and legally and health-wise it should be fine but still when you it still makes you think gee you know maybe I'm a bit vulnerable well because like I couldn't necessarily go to Morocco and my wife can't necessarily come to Australia so it's sort of this is the only place we can legally be together when when things get locked down so you feel a little bit vulnerable so many things we we thought we took for granted have been taken away from us this this year but yes there must be lots of you dear hello sorry i'm looking down i'm not But um, I imagine a lot of expats or migrants feel much more vulnerable than I do. Looks like California. Well, there you go. Doesn't look like parts of California I've been to, but California is a big, diverse place. Before the burning, yes. And this is the other cool tree that I like. We usually use signal around here as well. Maybe it's something to do with the trees. Right, you couldn't go and see your parents in Canada, Charlene. Yeah, well, there you go. So, well, I mean, we were going to, we were having a big trip to Australia in, in April that got cancelled. Yeah, it is like a sculpture. Yeah, this side's the best too. Yeah, I go around the bottom of it quite close, but um, this is the best angle. There you go. Screenshot that, people. Oh, yeah, true. You could make it out of a... Okay, Charlene. Enjoy. I hope it's... Oh, wow. I can see. Look, there's a red ball of sun over there. We are going to have a nice... Nice view. That is not a monument. That is a tree. But um, this means we should have a nice look at the at the um, priory ruins. I wonder if I can get the, the sun around it somehow. Let's see, because this path goes around the corner. I'll have to screenshot it myself. Well, it's, I'm sort of a bit low here. See where the sun is now. It's pretty nice with the high voltage lines behind it. <laughs> yes, it's a tree. <laughs> yeah, it's just all rotted away where the where the um, branches have fallen off, I guess. <laughs> We've had good signal today. See, look, from this side, well, it's still nice, but it's not as interesting, is it? Yes. Oh, it could be a 5G tower. Yes, lots of um, reedy stuff. I presume it floods in here at times. What are these? Is that a sedge or something? Is that what sedges are? <laughs> Feels like um, that's a diversion to the path, is it? Maybe it went, used to go through there. 
Oh, yes. All right, so this little tree's fallen over. G'day, island girl. Coppice tree, was there? Isn't the copper is this coppice a type of tree as well? <laughs> I know coppicing is a, a technique, if you like, to cut a tree off at the base. Yeah. So then you get multiple stems. Some trees love it, some trees don't like it at all. Unfortunately, I don't know which is which. How's the serenity? You know, I'd be more worried about living under this than the near 5G. <laughs> Although, who knows, right? Like, there's a lot of conspiracy theories around 5G. It doesn't mean... And even though I think a lot of them are bullshit, doesn't mean they're wrong. Yes, I'm still congested, actually. <laughs> and... As I was saying, my... I, normally get a cough for a couple of weeks after a cold oh yeah sorry not the best did you get a nice shot Charlene I'll be able to see that orange ball shortly I guess it's still smoke in the atmosphere from, well, no, it's normally like that, but they do say that the, the colours have been a bit stronger because of the smoke from the Northwest American fires. It does look a bit like Bonnie Doon, doesn't it? We're going to Bonnie Doon. Oh no, Neil, didn't they have warning signs there? Beware of overhead wires. Presumably you didn't hurt yourself. Luckily uh, the line wasn't too wet I guess. I guess that's the danger, your nylon wire wouldn't be a conductor. But if it's wet, you'd be in trouble. <laughs> Got a few honkers flying over. Watch out! Oh. I know the River Seven, that's the one that goes down by Bristol, isn't it? But it's a long river, I guess. I don't know the power station. No, not right. Uh, well, it's the border with Wales, right? Down south, that's the Seven. One flash and you're ash. That's a good line. I don't, I presume you didn't write it yourself. Probably from some movie, I don't know. Probably, probably suffering from hay fever as well. Longest river, there you go. Oh, how come I didn't? There we go. There's our red orange ball. Sparky's Creek, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> how come I didn't have to know that in my life in the UK test when I got my 
residency. Gareth Bale is back at Spurs. Well, that's pretty exciting, I suppose. Yeah, they're not going to be back home by eight. Yeah, well, I guess it's a sports reference. Ah, there, ah, oh, right, okay. Yeah, well, I guess I would guess the Thames because it's the only real river I can think of, real significant river I can think of in the UK. Someone was doing a quiz on Periscope. Tani, Tani that I actually participated in the other day and I came second. I never do well in quizzes, but she had easy questions or easy for me anyway. What is the Thames called upstream? Oh, another pub question. Uh, don't know. Maybe it's the line. Who's tenant? Oh, look. The upper Thames. <laughs> There's actually a ball of orange there in the middle through the tree. You can't see it. It's just over too overexposed in the background. Tane. T H N E. Oh, look. That's pretty nice, but you can't see it. Oh, now you can. There you go. Look. Over and under. What about even that way? Not quite. Okay, California A B. California B, maybe. Maybe. Oh, Gorge, Katie. Good morning. Gorge, isn't it? Yeah, Tane. Tane, somebody. Dare say she may be a southern girl, but I don't know if that's really true. How about that? Let's keep going. Oh, now last time I came here, the style was broken. I wonder if they fixed it. It's not sunset, that's sunrise. Neil, what side of the planet are you on? Yes, this is my morning walk. This feels more open than than before. I don't remember usually having such a view into the lovely looking river. Okay, Pink Angel. Hello, Los Angeles. California, Abe. All hail the great orange sky orb, yes. We'll see some more of it shortly if I can get through here. This is the trouble because the, the style is broken, really broken. So there's nothing to do for it except climb over and touch the pole. <laughs> so my left hand is now contaminated. And if I scroll or zoom with my left hand, my phone will be contaminated. No, actually, it was well, I didn't use my fingers, I used the the palm of my hand. Look at that! Look at that! Wait for a car before I cross the road. Yes, I do feel good after my morning walks, unless I'm feeling bad anyway, because they're cold. Yeah, maybe I should keep a pocket sanitizer. Well, I should. The problem is, I don't like carrying stuff when I'm out walking. Oh, there's your swans. 
Do I think environment pollution? Well, it's probably a lot better than it used to be, I would say. But as a as a bit of an outsider who doesn't really know the details of what goes on, stereotypically, I would imagine this government's not doesn't have environment that high on its priorities. I'm actually, because I'm a little bit out of time, I'm going to go this way instead. <laughs> Look, there is our priory with the sun. Yeah, Greenpeace is good. Go Greenpeace. You know, I was embarrassed the other day. Actually, I'm going to go back because if I, I'll see if I can get the the sun coming over the top, even though it'll be probably overexposed. Ava's here out to sea, finally. What happened the other day? What had did happen the other day? Oh yes, the other day. So I was, thank you. <laughs> so when I was scoping one of the 100 days of water for Mark, walking along the Basing State Canal, and I came across a, a group of what I said were geese. But as Mark pointed out to me in his, in his scoring and critique later, they were not geese, they were swans. And I was so embarrassed that I, I mixed up geese and swans. over the fence but under this tree we get a good a good look no no one around there's a few cars going past but it's early in the morning on a Sunday so most sensible people are having a bit of sleeping there we go look at that oh, I've got to crouch down for you That's pretty nice. I did feel like a goose, I'm not a swan. It was the baby ones that were grey that was my excuse that fooled me. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. How good is that? Oh, sorry about my sniffling though. You can put it on silent if you want. Own screenshot of that. One. Too much. How about that? Yeah, there's a couple of cyclists coming past. Forever. <coughs> Oh, thank you, Michael, for tweeting out a screenshot. Oh, I'm still in theatre mode. No wonder I didn't see any comments. Detectives, I guess. Uh, what am I eating for breakfast? Uh, what am I eating for breakfast? I don't know. Might be, um, speaking of Moroccan food, we had lovely... Um, going to say Rifa yesterday but it wasn't it was the round one um, can't remember but uh, today I think we're going to have um, there you go look at all the people out now today I think we're going to have Barria James Bond, do you think? 
Do 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 Uh, yes, Moroccans often eat with their hands. <laughs> from a sh often sh eating with shared from a shared plate with with their hands. Uh, Bahia, which is um, there's no single spelling, but it's probably B. B G H R I R is probably the most common spelling you'd find. <laughs> if you Google it, oh, back, yes, back, yes. <laughs> and if my lovely wife was watching, she'd probably say, oh, I'm not saying it properly anyway. Flaky, no, no, no. Um, flaky is the other one. The rife and the msmen. And oh, what's the other word? I'm worried I'm saying, I'm getting it all mixed up. No, but here's, no, no, it's, um, it's floppy like a thick pancake. One big circle, yes. Thank you, Rich. I used to be able to say I walk in the mornings like this every day, but it's becoming pretty rare because the sun's getting up too late. Can't get out early before the day starts. Yes, I've eaten stuffed, oh, grape leaves. Uh, I don't think so. Well, I don't know. Well, I guess so, that's vine leaves, right? I guess the, vi the stuffed vine leaves are vine, grape vine, I imagine, so yes, I have. Fatia. Uh, I know the name, but it's like it's not Moroccan, is it? It's some other, some Middle Eastern or is it a Lebanese thing, maybe, or Turkish, Syrian, perhaps. <laughs> this car, I think I'm holding a speed camera up to it. This is where I came across before. Down that way. Oh, and look. Our reference point, back to the Woking Towers. Good morning, Martin Andrew. How are you this lovely morning? Still got good weather up there, I presume. Even though, I, pre I presume it covers you, you're getting more and more locked down, eh? You should get a look out. Don't just look out, get out. Oh, maybe you're locked down, maybe you can't go out. Hello from the USA, which part of the USA? Yeah, you've been more locked down. Well, yeah, right. Fair enough. Well, all I can say is thank you for taking one for the team. That you guys being locked down up there, that means that we can still have a great time down around London and the southeast. So. 
that's um the the usual way things go around the uk i've learned that much about about the uk oh does it marco sato well this is not quite yeah you can go out yeah i understand well that's right i mean even in the even in the height of the lockdown that we had nationally there was no limit on how long you could go out for i don't think it was here was it once a day was maybe the limit i don't know. maybe it was exercising once a day but there was no limit <laughs> marco yes that's true well the waistlines are reasonably big here as well but the roads have been around for too long and they don't grow <laughs> Yeah, I mean, a lot of places had limited to an hour or or something like that, but... People often said I was being naughty if I was out walking, scoping for more than an hour, but not the case. So, look, there's no footpath along here. Well, there, you could maybe get along there, but up, up on the corner there, it's pretty dangerous. So, luckily, there's a secret path through here. Yeah. Right. I don't even remember, because I've looked it up and I don't remember finding anything saying even an hour. Maybe they said it in some of the, the press conferences. I miss those press conferences, I have to say. They were a bit of fun. <laughs> now I've got to go and Google and find the charts. Oh, a bit cloudy. What a shame. I think we've got... Three more days of clear skies here. Well, okay, Marco, if you want to see classic English, keep watching. I can hear people, probably cyclists behind me. Keep watching. G'day, Suyog. Yeah, right, fair enough. Now look, here's some classic English for you. We come up this path and we turn around and here's a cute little church. And it's Sunday, so I should go in and pray, I guess. Look at that. Good on you, Marco. I'll subscribe back. Oh, you got a coffee? Good. Yeah, it's a nice cute little church. <laughs> There's a little historical frieze in there that I have shown on one of my one of my scopes before. The doors might even be open. I, I don't think I've been back here since churches have been open for private worship. Oh look, this the doors are open. There's someone even in there. How about that? I'm not going in there. Look, it's St. Nicholas Perford from circa 11.50. Yeah, it's Sunday. I've had a walk around in the gravestones before, over the road as well. People are dying to get in there, exactly. Uh, yeah, churches are right. Well, maybe they're closed again in some parts of the country, but I think I heard that places of worship are still open. I think it's only for... No, it's not even only for private prayer. I think they can only do services now. Can even do services now. Oh, where are you off to? Oh, yes, you'll go. You're heading away somewhere, aren't you? Can't tell my wife. She'd be so jealous. Is it Greece or Italy or something? Madeira. Oh, well, close. Well, good, good luck. Hope you have a nice time. I hope you can get back safely and without too much quarantining. But it would hardly matter to me if I had to quarantine after travelling somewhere. Oh, good day, Bernie. 
well, close enough. I mean, I'm an Australian, come on, anywhere in Europe's just close, once you're here. That's true, close to Africa. <laughs> These are uh, Mary, did I say hello to you, Mary? Hello, Mary. <laughs> you know, Europe. Europe just fits in one, inside one state of Australia, I think. So these, um, this cluster of houses is called Lady Place. A lot of them are for sale as well. If you want to come and join here, oh, you do have to quarantine in Madeira. Oh, yeah? How close to the pub? Yeah, there's not a pub here. There's only a church. So you have to go there for your wine on, only on Sunday mornings. Oh, until you get a test result, right? Yeah? Fair enough. Yeah, well, there's a lot of pressure to put that in place here too, isn't there? So, maybe this one, oh no, that one's for sale as well. So I have actually had a quite a bit of a look around in here on one of my earlier scopes. And you could laugh about Lady Place and there's Lady Cottage and there's Lady's Little Place or I don't know, I forget what they're all called. Oh, Bernie Doll, it's another account. Well, what did you do? What did you do? What did you, I'm following your dolly on your new account. Oh well, good to get a test. Lady Garden in Lady Place, exactly. All of these good stories we had when we were looking around here. And I guess it'd be, it wouldn't be cheap to come and live here, but if you want to come and join me on my walks, you're most welcome. <laughs> but time to move on today. I feel a luxury that I allowed to allowed to be out until eight o'clock, but still, I'm pressed for time. My first experience of a test. Well, I had one again this week, and I had one in April, both negative. And I am, um, well, I don't know if they do it the same in Spain, but um, uh, I, I don't even find it uncomfortable, just a bit of a tickle. But I guess it depends on your, your gag reflex and whatever. So, yeah. G'day Martin. Oh, beach camera Ian, hello. I sort of slept in this morning. I didn't get up till five, nearly 5.30 and your scope had finished one minute ago. And g'day Zach. Oh, good to have you here. So I'm sort of heading home now. I've done the, done the big tour down to the, down to the ruin of the Priory. Yeah, take vitamins, yeah, well, I'm still a bit under the weather. I probably don't, don't have enough vitamins in my diet. Maybe I should have multivitamins. I should really just improve my diet. Yes, another gorgeous day. We've got three more in a row like this. It's about, well, it started off about 13 degrees. It's probably close to that still, and 22 or 23 during the day. Cyclists are out. I see a Saeed, I guess. <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, yeah, so... Well, interesting to see how you go with the, the scope. With the, with the test, Martin. <laughs> I, um, I was saying before, when I went testing this week, I had a choice of either doing it myself or getting someone to do it for me. And... Um, I felt I'd be quite comfortable doing it for myself. Hello, I'm often quite squeamish about like blood tests and things I don't really like, but um, but I knew it was not any problem of discomfort for me, so I could do it by myself. But as my wife pointed out, the professionals will probably do it, do a better job, and more likely to get an accurate result. <laughs> but um. Yeah, she, she doesn't like it at all. She struggles both in her throat and in her nose. Always a way, right? There's my 
pile of poo starting to regenerate but yeah I would have sort of liked to do it myself because I don't like to have to expose the poor health workers to the <laughs> the health workers to um to more risks than they need to I feel like I probably should have done it myself if I if I can well we're not quite to the brown house Michael I noticed your comment before we're at the stone farm from lady place to stone farm there you go that's just about as good a joke <coughs> and yes there's a, a joke about me and my wife's gag reflexes as well but I, I couldn't possibly go there You'll just have to say it to yourself. <laughs> oh, now the wind's adding to my sniffles. Anyway, Ian, 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 are you still here? Hey, I have to, um, yeah. Oh. I need to, I, I need to get on my hay fever tablets in case that's probably contributing as well. Ian, thank you for your scope as usual. Missed you yesterday, but I guess you probably had bad weather. I skimmed through your driving scope today. But I saw on your Twitter, you retweeted a, well, a scope from Neva. <laughs> and I, um, I was just watching it when I realised I should get out and scope myself. I was five minutes in for 20 minutes, but I couldn't find her on Periscope. So I don't know whether she's blocked me, but she actually mentioned me. <laughs> so I don't know who else knows her. Do you remember her, Ian? <laughs> she used to scope. She was probably the the first walking scoper I remember I think even before you Michael I don't know but she used to scope around in um, in Turkey somewhere somewhere remote in Turkey well I don't know why she would block me I don't think she would but I searched for her name but actually some I think that maybe there's something wrong with Periscope search because I searched for someone else by a username yesterday and it didn't find them N N E V A was her name. Look at all the um, the chestnuts here. Yeah, right. But I, who else was um, who else used to be in those scopes? There was what's the the Irish the guy from Northern Ireland who's disappeared. Used to go to those. He was a politician, right? Conkers, is that what they're called? But they're chestnuts too, right? Or are they not really chestnuts? Never seen her. Yeah, no, she was um, she was a bit of fun, but she was she was trying to get out of Turkey, but now she lives in Florida, and she's um, I follow her on Instagram, and we chat on Instagram, so she I'm sure I'm sure she wouldn't have blocked me, deliberately anyway. But it was so good to see her. So, but I think um. I don't know, I don't usually watch broadcasts from Twitter, but I I couldn't follow her from Twitter either when I pressed the follow button on Twitter. Basil, yeah, I think probably in disgrace, yes. Basil McRae, that's it. Oh, yeah, put a string through them here. Good idea. Here, yeah, we've got some of them near home. I'm sure we can collect them. Yes, well, I've seen her do Instagrams as well, but she's so... Um, She's so flighty, she just sort of comes and goes and it's hard to get a handle on her sometimes. <laughs> but she's um she's lovely. Jeff the drunk, I don't know Jeff the drunk. Really? Oh I didn't I'd never met Basil. But I've been um well for a few years, even before lockdown I've been thinking of going to Northern Ireland and wanted to look him up, but Yeah, I know there was some alleged scandal around him, but I don't know. I'm just guessing that's why he disappeared, but... 
who knows? He probably revealed too much as a politician. Uh, I don't know. Not the, the meetups I've been to, I'm pretty sure Bazza wasn't there. Unless it was before I knew who he was. Ron from Alaska. Oh, Ron, what's his name? No, he's not as hot as me, though. Well, Jeff the Drunk. Oh, I don't know Jeff the Drunk. Anyway, we rode around... Um, is there a network of walkers? Well, sort of. Sort of. Two of them are here. There's Beachcomber Oz and there's Michael Oud, the walking scopers. Martin Andrew, you're a walking scoper? Or if you're talking... Are you talking about a network of walking scopers? Or are you talking about people who walk together in real life? So anyway, Ian is is Neva scoping. She's not called Neva. Her her handle on Twitter is not Neva. <laughs> Simon Iggy. Dana. Were you there, Martin? Gosh, I'm so I'm such a shy nerd that I didn't even realise you were there. On the on the like the roof garden on South Bank. Yeah, well, a network of scapers, Dana. Was Dana there? Oh, I don't know. I can't believe if I met Dana. Dana Cyril. Oh, gosh, Martin, that's embarrassing. I never knew that I'd met you. <laughs> well, I presume, did we meet each other? <laughs> yeah, Beck Boop, I remember Beck Boop was there. Oh. <sighs> Chocolate Johnny. It was when Chocolate Johnny was over. That was the the reason for that scape, right? Or for that meetup? Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, Dana still um, puts things on YouTube. She hasn't blocked me on YouTube. Oh, there you go. And we all got a sample of chocolate Johnny's, Johnny's melted chocolates <laughs> right well I think that was my second meet up I did another one with um, that that uh, oh what's her name Sonam Sonam 108 organised up near um, near St Pancras yeah <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> I don't feel I could um, fairly judge Johnny's chocolate from a melted sample. Right. Dana was the very beginning of all the nonsense. Well, we're back. Dana is German, say no more. Oh, look, don't say bad things about Germans. No racism on here. Ian, I won't have that. Firewood will be in short supply, will it? What is that? Well, there's plenty of firewood here. Look. Just go and get some from there. I don't know. I just kept, kept getting black flashes, black flashes, black flashes. Like every five seconds, I got about five of them. And it's not usually an area of low signal that I know. So, but we seem to be back. I didn't do anything. G'day, Ayan Anka. I had we're back. I was looping. Oh, yeah. What did I say five times then? You are, Ayan. Very good. Welcome, Ayan. Where are you from, Ayan? In Turkey, I would, could possibly guess. About Dana and the start of the drama. Oh, well, she, used, she was great with her drone. Oh, I missed Dana. Like, did I say? She still seems to do YouTubes. So. Is she actually in Berlin? Oh, I should have looked her up when I went to Berlin. That was my last overseas trip in, in February last year. 
Not from Turkey. Oh, bad guess. Does she scope still? Oh, well, she's blocked me. I don't know why. I was on the wrong side of the big boop thing is my, my crime, I guess. That's right. Dave from Chicago now. China's short of pork, is it? Oh dear. No firewood? I was close. Oh, close to Turkey. Greece? <laughs> There's so many places close to Turkey. I remember someone in Turkey once telling me, you think Turkey, you think Turkey causes trouble? You look at all the trouble we've got around us. No, okay, because there's, yeah, all sorts of places around Turkey. I'm not going to embarrass myself by trying to guess too much more. <laughs> yeah, well, Dana apparently got a block, a block of blockers going. <clears throat> what am I doing in the middle of the forest? Well, this is my morning walk that I've been doing most mornings over summer. It's now becoming a bit of a rare thing. Yes, I'm glad it's over. <laughs> Too. Except when Michael likes to bring it up. Dana sounds like a naughty girl. Well, she wasn't, a, wasn't nice. But I guess there was a lot of people who weren't very nice at the time. People got a bit carried away with things. No, well, that's right. It's not over. It's hard to be over. You know, every time I go back and every time I see blogger mama mama on some scope, I think, oh, he doesn't need to block me. That's so stupid. And yes, you were, you bore the brunt of it a lot more than, than I did. So it's easy for me to just put it behind me. And here we are at the shoe tree. Where probably it's not very long until these shoes get contributed up into the shoe tree. Because look, there's a hole there. And now there's a hole on this side as well. G'day, Specko. So I think if we contribute my red shoes up there, that'll be a good contribution, should they? Because they should be nicely visible up there. Good light for observing the shoe tree today. Yeah, very holy shoes. But it's good to have a pair of holy shoes that you can just slip on and off. So I don't know that I want to really get rid of them that, that quickly, even when I do replace them properly. I've got some nice white shoes. Some nice... What are they? Sketches. My wife got me some white sketches that are very sexy, but they're... They're, um... They're too good to wear on walks like this. But I still need to get some... Oh, Martin, you were recommending me some... Yeah, thank you, Ian. Yeah, I like colourful things. <laughs> I didn't show you my colourful socks. <gasps> Yesterday I wore matching socks. Mindel. Mind, Mindel, is that how you say it? Anyway, yeah, so I, I did, um, did order some online, some from Mountain Warehouse, is that what it's called? But, um... They felt just too hard and stiff when I tried them on, so I sent them back. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not even sure. I, I think I need to go to a shop. As much as I don't really want to go to a shop and touch a whole lot of shoes, I think I might have to. Because I don't really know whether I want to get boots or shoes. I feel like I should get boots. Yeah, I should get boots. It's just a lot of trouble to keep them. There's a walker. Got my bomber's socks on today. No, why is people saying bombers? Oh, Bernie. Oh, that was a good match there. The last, um, last quarter was pretty exciting. I actually watched it. Unfortunately, I got into the football just right at the end of the season. Yeah, because I, I, I mean, I, the way I walk around and trip over roots, I'd probably do well to have sturdy boots. But, um, yeah, well, I've never had, 
well i've never really experienced walking a lot in in wet grass and and wet conditions lots which i'm hoping to keep doing over winter so i do probably need something waterproof Uh, a log. No, uh, almost. Go on, Michael. How about a root? Oh, yep, I've tripped over plenty of roots. <laughs> yeah, I should. I should, but I don't think... I mean, as much as you can... You can buy them online and... And, um... Usually send them back if you don't like them. It's a hassle. <laughs> it takes a long time, so I think I've got to go somewhere and try them on. <laughs> Which I guess I'd better get a move on before I get locked down and stopped from doing it again. Eats roots and leaves, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so, well, maybe, no, well, you can't, whatever you do, you can't take them back after you try them, can you? Yeah, it is very annoying. Yeah, that is a cool tree, isn't it? It's, it's probably bigger than it looks. Around the trunk. It's a nice one. Even here, it's over me. Like, that's probably... 15 metres away and the canopy's out over me. Give it a hug. Oh, well, I haven't, uh, haven't hugged a tree for a long time, so all right. Here we go, hugging the tree. But see, look how big it is. I can't get far at all around it. Can't even get the other side of the tree and myself. And if I do that, then I can't put my other arm around there and hug it backwards like I'm chaining myself to the tree. <sighs> there we go. I've got a tripod. Oh, good idea. I'm not going to show. What's the point? I'm not. Well, I am that stupid, but maybe I'm not that vain. I'm not going to put my tripod down so I can show you hugging the tree. If I was doing something really stupid like going on the, the tire swing, then I might. Must be over a hundred. I'm not that old. <laughs> like you on the podium. I can't remember what podium is that. Oh, Michael. Actually, I may not have finished yet, but I watched your four-hour scope. I've been watching it in bits over the. Oh, yeah, I didn't see that bit. Right. Yes, that was your morning scope at the Olympic Stadium. I saw the evening one, but I, I didn't see much of the, the morning one. Oh, the tree. Oh, I knew you meant that. Look, I'm actually even going to be home by 8 o'clock on time. How about that? So I just got to the bit where Athena called in. And she said she likes you better than me. What? What is this? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But so hopefully if she... Well, she, oh, interesting she hasn't been back on my scope. Oh, no, she did once or twice, actually. So she may have re-followed me. But um, I guess I don't do call-ins normally, so she can't call in and tell me she likes me better than you in return. She probably just sucks up to whoever's there. G'day, Athena, we love you. Oh, yes, that's right. <laughs> I saw that. Oh, I saw your your mention of that later in the scope. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of walking. And here we are. I've snuck through to the Boulevard of Bye-Byes. So thank you all for joining me. We've had a nice walk down. It was dark when I started here earlier. I had my headlamp on, but I didn't... Um, I don't know that it makes much difference. I don't really need it. I don't know if it adds a bit of fun for, for you, but we just had five minutes of that. Then we got out to the golf course. We went down through the river flats. We saw the priory. 
lovely orange ball of sun come back up the road and through the forest and here we are by the shoe tree back in the boulevard of bye bye thank you everyone good to see you had a nice chat yes have a good sunday martin have a good sunday night everyone i'm bloody good thank you elvis presley tcb but i'm about to sign off so come back another day come back another day i'm sorry i can't tell you when it might be it could be no it's probably not going to be tomorrow morning so let me think tomorrow tomorrow monday probably do a lunchtime walk tomorrow i think it's going to be more more of a regular lunchtime thing now good morning do you do thank you ian and yes i've got to try and work out how to get so he's, he's never i didn't finish so he's never scoping regularly it sounded like she anyway i need to find her so it'll be good to have a gossip with her on periscope again what's for brunch uh yeah i bah here moroccan bah here probably for for breakfast what's her hand i don't know i'll um i'll share it when i work things out michael but yes at at least ian say hello to her from from me and i'm sure we'll catch up soon i mean she's still i've yeah i've got i guess i can always ask her on insta as well all right take care everyone have a good day ian shared on twitter But you may have shared her on, on Periscope. I don't know. I didn't see it on there. But I have so many. As everyone knows, I follow lots of people on Periscope. So my followed list of scopes is quite wide. Should have some energy drink. Maybe. I didn't bring any drink with me. I'll look forward to some more water and coffee. No, well, she used to be... Ne she really never sim on Periscope. Ah, so I probably search for a Twitter name. Right. So she, she's never sim on... Well... Yeah, I would have thought I'd be still following you if that's what she's on Periscope. Thank you, Ian. All right. Bye, everyone. Have fun. Thank you for joining me. See you again soon. Keep laughing.